Hi, I'm Tony. Welcome to Sports Bike Shop's video about the x lite X1005 Ultra Carbon Helmet. x lite is the sister brand to Nolan and they make some lovely helmets, including this flip front. I've heard people say recently that there aren't enough premium flip front helmets on the market, but I would definitely place this one in that category. The X1005 Ultra Carbon costs £459.99 and it has a quality feel throughout. It runs a composite fibre main shell, which has an outer layer of carbon fibre to give it that eye-catching appeal. And that's where this Ultra Carbon model differs from the straight X1005, as well as a price difference. The straight model is £339.99, so it's £120 cheaper than this helmet. The carbon skin over the top looks really good, and that's the main attraction for running this shell, as it doesn't make this helmet a lightweight. This size medium X1005 Ultra Carbon weighs in on our scales at 1,755 grams, which is kind of normal-ish for a flip front, but the straight X1005 only weighs 20 grams or so more, so that shows the attraction of the carbon should be looks really rather than a weight saving. So that shell has two sizable air intake vents running through it, one at the chin and then another one on top. The chin vent has a chunky sliding shutter just here that allows air to flow in and then it comes through the top of the chin bar and into the eye port. It's not as direct a flow as you find on some helmets, but I could feel the extra air on the inside of the helmet when riding with that vent open. The top slider is a grippy switch that has two stages of opening and that lets air flow through into the impact liner and then down to the rider's head. It can then travel through channels in that impact liner and escape through exhaust vents at the rear. Chin bar lifting mechanism on this helmet is like other x lite and Nolan helmets. It takes a little more input than other brands, but it is a more secure closure. Pulling the lower of the two buttons away from the chin bar makes this upper button here pop out and you pinch the two together and can lift the chin bar. It doesn't take long to get used to that and there is less chance of accidentally lifting the chin bar than there is on helmets with just one release button. So as part of the UK government's sharp testing program, those testers record how many impacts make the chin bar come open on a flip front helmet. The Nolan Group's flip front helmets have never had a chin bar come open in those tests. They've got a 100% rating on all of their helmets that have been tested as part of Sharp. Sharp have tested 111 flip front helmets as we record this and only 31 of those helmets have remained closed during 100% of the impacts and 10 of those 31 helmets were either x lite Nolan or Grex and those are the three brands in the Nolan group. One last thing about this chin bar mechanism, the lever just here locks it in the raised position meaning it can't accidentally slide forward and cover your eyes. That allows this helmet to have dual homologation. It's been tested to ECE 2205 both as a full face helmet with the chin bar closed and then as an open face with it locked in the raised position here. That makes it legal to wear this helmet with the chin bar down or locked up. And I'd say riding with it up is something you only really want to do at low speeds. The visor on this helmet is quick release and it's dead easy to change. Even when I was in clumsy mode, I could do it in 20 seconds and the visor lifting mechanism is really slick too. From fully open, it has five steps down until it rests on the bottom seal and then an extra push secures the central tab against the lock on the chin bar. The inner surface of the visor is very large, which is really good for peripheral vision and the pin lock anti-mist insert covers the vast majority of that surface so it won't interfere with your view any more than is strictly necessary. There's another plus with this helmet as well, the pin lock is already installed so there's no need to faff around with that before you can just get out there and ride. There's also an internal sun visor, it's treated to be fog free and that coating worked well in my time with this helmet. The sun visor operates on this switch on the lower left side of the lid and its operation brings back memories for an 80s kid like me who used to mess around with the stop eject buttons on the stereos and curries. It clicks as it moves through the gradual steps from top to bottom and then it retracts by pushing this button on the front. So you can quickly get that visor away in a situation like riding into darkness very quickly in a tunnel or something like that. So let's move on to the interior. The linings are always one of the main strengths of x lites helmets, and this one is comfortably up to their usual standards. It's incredibly soft and comfy, especially around the top of the head, where it uses a carbon weave to help with moisture management and comfort. The cheek pads are what x lite calls eyewear adaptive. So if you wear glasses and you're struggling to fit the spectacle arms in comfortably, you can modify the cheek pads. You can get to the foam inside the pads, and then there's a section in each pad that can be really easily trimmed away to make room for the spectacle arms. 
and there's more modification available in the skull pad as well. There's a plastic belt at the back of the neck roll and that alters the angle of the helmet as it sits on your head. You either pull that belt through more so that a lot of it protrudes from the main liner and then the helmet will tilt forward on your head. If you push it back through again and clip it up, then the helmet will be tilted further back on your head. I didn't really find the need to fiddle around with that in the time that I spent wearing this helmet. That might be a useful feature for some people who just find that the helmet sits at the wrong angle for riding their bike. Behind the cheek pads, there are recesses for intercom speakers. They're filled with foam inserts as standard, which will keep it quieter for people who don't fit a comm system. I personally didn't fit an intercom to this helmet as I think it best suits the dedicated X-Lite Encom system. X-Lite put a lot of thought into how that system is fitted to this helmet and I think a universal intercom just wouldn't sit on this helmet anything like as well as that unit. There's a chin curtain that comes with this helmet that clips into the base of the chin bar and that helps to keep the ride quiet. I can't speak for all scenarios when it comes to noise, but I reviewed this helmet while riding a Suzuki V-Strom 650 XT and I found it to be very quiet. I think the chin curtain helps a lot with that, as do these extension flaps on the base to create a closer fit around the neck and block out some more wind flow. The final point about the interior, the strap fastener. It's a micrometric sliding buckle, which is in common with pretty much every flip front helmet I've ever seen. But x and Nolan do this micrometric thing differently. Their operation is designed to be more secure than others with a two-stage opening. You have to rotate this red tab before the gray lever will open, which then allows you to pull the tooth belt clear of its housing. So last details, sizing and approvals. The X1005 Ultra Carbon comes in sizes from double extra small to triple extra large. There are three shell sizes to cover those helmet sizes. The smaller shell is for helmets from double extra small to medium. Large gets a shell to itself. And then the biggest shell is for lids from extra large and above. The helmet's approved to ECE 2205 for the road. It's not yet been tested by the UK government's Sharp scheme, but its two predecessors both scored four stars, which is very, very respectable. I hope that tells you everything you wanted to know about the X-Lite X1005 Ultra Carbon Helmet. But if there is anything you'd like to ask or to add, then please pop a comment below. Thanks for watching.